Well, here's a video that's been inspired by Stuart and the Spin Doctor on the forums. Can soft limits be automatically on at startup? Well, yes, they can to that. That's not a problem at all. But to Stuart, a two minute video, really? I can do this in two minutes. If I spent 150 sitting looking at a screen, then I just press the button to turn it on. So I'm gonna use this video as a basis, basis, the basis of creating a function to put in your startup script that then can be run from the PLC on first run but also can be used from a button somewhere else on the GUI. So from the Mac 4 main screen, I'm gonna connect a function to this lovely dormant little button. I really wish I knew what it was there for button. I'm sure Brett will be Skyping me later to say um, we want to put a function there we want to test it before we put it in our startup script if you put an error in your startup script it can well it can physically lock your GUI up um, cause crashes and then you would have to start Mac 4 there is a way of getting out of it starting Mac 4 up in editor mode but it is a pain you you can't it's no fun trying to debug a startup script, so always try your function out of the startup script. So that being said, we'll go to this lovely button and we use the left up script to create in here. Like all scripts, you won't need this in the startup script, but get in the habit of external scripts and instances and that. So we'll declare our local inst equals uh, mc dot mc or cm mc get instance and then obviously we need a function that we're going to put in the startup script so it's to do with a soft limit so set soft limits I'm glad I kept that so short oh, what on earth is that Let's even change that into a function called set, set limits or functio. It's nearly Italian. And close that off. Yay, I've, I've done my function. All right, in that function, now we don't want to do just one axis or do a function that does all six axis in there. We want to be able to, if you like, go for an individual axis or all the axis and tell it whether it's on or off. Well, let's do that with just two, passing two variables to it, the axis and the state. I'm in a state that we want that. So when we call that function, it would be set soft limits and we would pass it what access we want to use and whether we want we want it on or off great pretty simply so let's have a look at the function in the AP docs access deref no it's not that one then it's the MC soft limit set state now you'll see in here this is actually for C++ and C there's no MC Lua on there but to convert this to Lua is normally quite straightforward if you can master the art of copy and paste we'll copy that and we'll stick this into our function now the bulk of it is already there for us if it's going from C++ to Lua or 
you know to get to the lower version of it just put another MC dot in front of it if it's blue that exists if it's not blue it doesn't exist within the core now we've got our inst we've got the axis we want to change and we've got a turn on here but we're going to change that to the stake <clears throat> so how do we pass it an axis or a state well as a quick demonstration we can do a message box here look wx dot wx message box to string Now let's pass it something in there. Now if we look at the API docs, we've got an MC on and an MC off. And it also requires an int axis. Well, we've got Z axis there. So actually, if I take this across, across, if I copy and paste this into there, like that we'll use some of this stuff now if I go to use the Z axis that they're using here and run this this should be a nil value yep this is nil <coughs> because it's the way it's done within C++ now to make that into the Lua so the Lua can recognize it like I said before put the MC dot in front now on this machine there should be a 2 come up this time a number 2 because that's our number 2 axis so in the function there if we're sending it as Z See, my copy and pasting is terrible. If I'm using the mouse. So we're going to pass the soft set limits MC Z axis to turn on the Z. Or that could be Y, A, B. Same with the state. Let's look at the state now. If we use an MC on. Well, we know that's going to give an error. But if it was MC on, this should give us a 1, a 1 which is on, and a 0 which is off. Just to show you. A 0 there. So if we send... See on, we don't need that no more. Ta da! Why have I just put that in there? So let's change that to an MC dot MC on. Get rid of our message box now. Neil. So this now should run this function here. Sets off limits, tell it it's a Z axis and turn it on. Set finished. Great, wasn't it? Let's just check that in the screen itself. Enable the machine, tell it to turn on, and nothing happens. Why did nothing happen? Set soft limits, set soft limits, axis state, it's MC, MC on, MC, Z axis, that should work. Inst axis state. Well, of course, Daz. 
I've only set up the soft limits on X and Y. So I'll swap that over to X then. Come out. Right, now she should work. As you can see, soft limits has come on. So we know that command is working on a single axis. So back in our script, our function, how would we get all of the axis turned on? Because we can we can turn we can turn a single axis on and off with just that one command there. So we don't want to go set soft soft set soft limits um, x axis set soft limits y axis then the z axis and all that lot and turn them on let's add something into our function let's add another if axis is equal to m mc um, actually we'll keep it in capitals MC all now there is not an MC all in Mac 4 you have to keep an eye on it you can call this bit what you like but this is what I've called it in my own script on things I use although it doesn't exist you can you can do this MC dot mc all equals that's 20 if you can it's just a number just a number that's all it is so if axis is equal to mc all then we're going to do something else else we'll do that and it's got the if else end there you go so that's split up so if if the if axis is equal to MC all then do whatever's in here else if we've got a different number in there then it will do this one here so what should we do in there we've got six six axis that we want to turn on or off well we can use the repeat until so if we put a repeat until tell it what it's until um, let's call it um, m axis m axis is equal to six now we haven't got an M axis yet, so we'll create one. Local M axis equals, now our first axis is zero. So that's what we'll have. So this is gonna keep running and, and repeat whatever's in here until our axis is equal to zero. So let's do m axis equals m axis plus is that a plus no it's an equal plus one what do we want it to do we want it to do this six times We want it to do the inst, but now we're going to use the m axis, which is going to be a zero, a one, a two, a three, a four, or a five. Actually, it won't get to six, and it will set the state of them. Cool, eh? Yep. Just tidy this up a bit. Oh, 
tidy, as they say in Welsh pool. So we've got a function there, MC. So we can now do MC dot X MC all MC all. So if we run that now, declare our function. Let's run MC all. That should loop through there now. That's it. Just to check and make sure. Um, We'll put a message box under that as a little debug. WX dot WX massage. Mess massage. I can do with a massage. Message box to string. And what are we going to do? The M axis. M axis. That's it. So if we run this each time on the way through now. We should get a message box. So we've set zero. Oops, click OK, and then it goes away. Hey, that's all right. I'm a poet. So that's let's set our axis one, two, three, four. set so zero to five which is six axis now set up on this machine is zero one and two so three four and five mac would would have returned an error so it's best practice not to have the call return an error if possible so we can stick just that tiny little bit more in here to do a little bit of uh, error checking or not running code if it's going to be wrong. What a load of rubbish. Anyway, back in the API docs, if we go to the axis, you'll find one here MC axis is enabled. Now, this is a check to see if your machine is actually using that axis and with this function that we're making anyway if you've enabled that axis then we'll set the soft limits on it if you haven't then we won't try and set the soft limits on it so like before let's take this we've got the lower one this time so we can copy that and we'll start at the bottom a script let's just paste that in there just get it so we can read it so inst and our access ID pretty simple the ID we're going to use is um, M axis Enabled equals M axis. So the first one would be zero, wouldn't it? Yup. So we'll copy that. In fact, we could have just pasted it. So if it equals all, we'll put it in our repeat because that M axis is going to be changed. It's going to be revolving, if you like. Um, let's pull that back so I can see it a bit better. So, enabled. In fact, we don't even need the return code on that actually. We're not debugging the return code. So, enabled equals empty axis inst m axis. I'm getting lost here. Right, if. Fifth, fifth, if enabled is equal to one then do what's in between these two lines not forgetting the nth <laughs> end shift you over a bit so we're getting quite um 
quite into it there. So local axis, local m axis is equal to zero, right? So if axis is equal to doing them all, we're going to repeat what's in between the repeat and until. Let's move that over again. And that lot. So we'll repeat until there. So enabled axis equals rm axis and if that's enabled equals one then we'll do these with the message box so let's give that a test f5 right that declares the function so we're going to do mc equals all on we're going to repeat as our message box for number one which is zero not number one for zero Click OK, next should get axis 1, and axis 2, now I ain't got an axis 3 enabled on here, so it's gone straight past it. And that's our script at the end. So now we'll, we know the script is all working for a single axis, or whatever axis we've got enabled, we can move this across into our start hop script if we copy copy and paste this into an external editor i find is better so we'll copy that and i'll paste this across into notepad plus on our course i've got to use this brett's plug in there makes life a lot easier so we don't need this in here now, so we can delete it. That becomes my lovely little test button that does nothing again. Right, um, what am I doing in there? Mac 4. Right, let's go to our startup script. Or, it's not startup script, it's screen load. Startup script, that's really old, isn't it? It's like startup sequence on the old computers. We've already got our instance declared in here so we don't need that now do we as normal as possible put all your stuff at the bottom there's what I tend to um, try and tell people or advise them is stick a section at the bottom and just put in it um, anything like uh, my my added functions so if you go to change from one screen to another or you're updating something you know all the stuff that you've put is now below below it this is all your stuff below this box here and you can just copy and paste that into a new screen set so our function was this so we'll copy that and stick that in there the same as declaring that mc.mc all now i know i've got this in my script and i'm using it and i do keep an eye on obviously the api docs and things like that now you could you could change this to something different. You could, you know, just do it MC all. You could just do it for MC all because then that will only work in the lower version. Or you could, you know, call it what you like. Just be careful what you do in case Mac 4 decides they're going to start using a MC.MC all later on in something else they develop. Because if it does, then you'll get conflicts. But for now, we know they're not using it. And this is a demonstration. Obviously, you need to declare that in there as well. well that's it. That's our, that's our function within the screen load. Not startup script, as like you keep wanting to say. So we can save that. Let's come out of it, and then we'll go into our PLC script. Now, exactly the same in the PLC script 
I always put my own function, my own part in there. Like this one, I've already set it up here ready so you didn't have to watch me copy and paste. That's nice of me, isn't it? And it's my added scripts. So th this is, you know, the PLC first run. Then I'd also put other stuff that I've added in here. Keep yourself um, tidy, if you like. If you notice what Brett does in there, everything is just labelled. You, you know, you can always find stuff in there, especially that big warning. So what we're going to put in there anyway, we're going to put these in, haven't we? So let's copy that. Stick that in there. So on our first run, it's going to turn our soft limits on. Cool, eh? Let's come out of it. Yeah. Oh. Which idiot left a message box in there? Okay. Let's go back into where. Go back to our function. And well, of course it's down the bottom here somewhere. Get rid of that goddamn message box. There we are. Ta da! Right. If I close down Mac 4, when I start it up, I think I was using that one. Yep. Eventually, our soft limits are on there according to it. So if I enable, do a reference. Yep. I think if I remember rightly, I stuck these on about 100. There we go. We can still use these here. Absolutely great. So that's it, um, Stuart. I'm so glad I spent two minutes of my time um, to show you that. But apart from that, don't forget you can still use that function to go in and turn turn an axis off if you want, or turn them on and off. Do what you like with them buttons. But that's how you take a function, add it to the start up script screen load script and then obviously get it to run only once um, within the PLC well I hope you enjoyed that video hope it sh shed some light on a few bits and pieces especially passing numbers or integers backwards and forwards between functions and I'll see you in the next video